Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in a very old video, I showed that if one assumes that a real number can be represented as an infinite decimal expansion, of course, there is no, no such thing as an infinite decimal expan expansion. It's, it's, a, it's a delusion, okay? So that's the first thing. But if it could be represented that way, then the set of real numbers is indeed countable. Okay. So I'm going to explain that to you very clearly. So we, we get these idiots. Don't know who this guy is, but this fool here uh, wrote up a PDF, which is, in, which is entirely wrong. He said the highlighted digits are this. And if you add one, then this number here will not be in the list. Actually, that number will be in the list because representation is sufficient, okay? It's sufficient to name all the elements. And a countable set is one whose elements can be named systematically. That your lecturers tell you you need to place it into a bijection with N is due to the fact that you're incorrigibly stupid, and so are they. And they need to show you a way that you can determine whether a set is countable. But it's the same thing. Uh, setting it into bijection with one, uh, with the natural numbers, is the same as being able to systematically name all the elements. Okay, so let's see how this is so entirely flawed and wrong. Okay, so if you have a decimal tree, you start off with, so basically I'm assuming, according to Cantor now, that uh, zero, 01, the interval zero, 01, has a bijection with R, okay? So that's given. <clears throat> so if we show that every uh, number, every real number is, every real number between zero and one is in this interval, then we basically proved the, the, uh, the required statement. That is that the set R is countable. Okay, so the first column shows you uh, how each digit is mapped to 10. And of course, then in the second column, it's mapped to 100, as you see here, and then to 1,000 and so on. So if you're given the number 314, like that, you can locate it in this tree. How? Well, you start off with 3, and then it would be, which what element here? It would be 10, 20, uh, 21, in this first column, okay, so it's 321. And in this column here, it will be all, it'll be 100, 200, 300, and four, or 305, okay? So there you go. You can actually put together a number, okay, a number, a natural number, natural number, which corresponds with this particular element, 0 0.134, okay, because I'm assuming uh, the interval 0 to 1. So uh, Cantor doesn't have an argument. He never had an argument. His entire argument is flawed from beginning to end. Okay, so first of all, there is no such thing as an infinite set. But to humor Cantor, we'll assume that there is. And that's what I've done. So the second thing is that if all real numbers can be represented as infinite decimal expansions, then the set R is countable, as I have just shown you through a bijection with 0, 1 and all the real numbers, okay? So it doesn't matter if you decide to change the i-th digit on the diagonal. That will always be part of the enumeration, which, by the way, is a misnomer because uh, you don't need numbers to uh, make the set countable. You just need unique names. In which case, if you have a systematic way of linking those names with numbers, uh, as you do with a bijection with n, then it's definitely countable, okay? So then the third point is that the set R is not countable. So Cantor was right about it, but not for the reasons he thought. He was an idiot. It's not countable because most of its members, infinitely many, that shit term that most of you morons use, cannot be named systematically. Do you understand that? That's why the whole argument is bullshit from the beginning to end. And so when you see the terms representation and enumeration thrown around as that idiot Mark Tucker did, 
as that idiot macho girl that in this discussion I had with him many, many years ago, uh, you will see that it's all smoke and mirrors. They don't have a proof. This was never a proof. This is one of the core parts of that bullshit subject called real analysis, okay? So somebody, like in our previous discussion with uh, James McLean, he says that most of the things are proved. Well, they aren't proved. They are not proved. This has never been proved. In fact, there are several different proofs, proofs that it's wrong and it doesn't hold water. And in fact, several professors like Dr. Uh, Wolfgang Muchenheim <clears throat> also claims that it's impossible to, to uh, justify Cantor's argument. Well, for, for one of the very simple re reasons that you do not have something that is called an infinite def decimal expansion. And when you make assumptions like that about infinity, you'll obviously be able to prove any bullshit you like, okay? Because infinity is a bullshit concept, period, okay? And then the next thing is, if you want to make a claim about countability, you need to know what it is. The majority of you and your professor morons do not understand countability. The main crux of countability is that a set can be indexed or its members can be listed systematically or printed systematically or... Um, basically that you can put it in a bijection with N, which is equivalent to all the previous statements. If you're not a rare subscriber to my channel, become a subscriber and follow me on academia.edu. Click like and subscribe. Till next time, goodbye.